Good morning, everyone. This is Janie Seltzer, and I am so pleased to be with you alongside my husband, Pastor Don Seltzer, here live at Hidden Life Ministries, where we help people understand that their real life is hidden with Christ in God. And I have a question for you this morning, and if you're wondering, by the way, oh, I see you coming on, if you would let me know you're there and who you are and where you are. I may not be able to um, speak to all of you. In fact, I'm sure I won't. And um, you will have prayer requests and needs that will come through. And I want you to know that we have a community of people behind the scenes, uh, our family of Hidden Life Ministries who love you and are praying for you and will answer you directly at, if you put a prayer request up on the comments section. I am also the spiritual director for the Zig Ziglar family community around the world. Hi Zigglers, love you. Thank you for this privilege to reach people around the world in this difficult time. It is a time of great suffering um, for everyone, really. Um, and we desire above all things to help you find wholeness and wellness in your soul is it well with your soul today if it's not then i encourage you to listen in and we will help you in every way we know how but most of all the good shepherd even christ jesus will help you as we come together to worship him on this sunday I give you love and I give you his grace and his comfort in the name of Jesus. And so I'd like for my husband to lead in a continuation of a teaching um, from Psalm 23. Don and I have been partners in life and ministry for more than 46 years. Yes, I know, it's a lot of years. And through the yin and the yang and the ups and the downs, the Lord has continued to call us deeper in and higher up. And it's been quite a ride. So, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that, that we've had our years together with Young Life Ministry, and then we had church ministry when I was ordained in 1977, so it continues. Uh, there was a slogan that is in California concerning the coronavirus, and the slogan goes, don't be scared, be prepared. Mm. Mm. And I thought about that, and I mm. said, uh, there's truth to that. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared, uh, be prepared. Uh, as we've been looking at Psalm 23, uh, the, there are six verses to it. And last time we talked about verse 1. Uh, I'll just read the whole psalm as I can because of my limited, finite ways. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm. Uh, I will not lack anything. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Mm. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, or for his honor's sake. Mm. And the Lord your God is with me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Mm. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Mm. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Mm. My cup overflows. Mm. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Mm. In those six verses, David, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is writing a magnificent treatise that how to cultivate calmness mm. even when darkness comes, mm. even in the midst of trials and troubles and heartache and loss, mm. that how to cultivate calmness. Uh, verse one, just a little bit of review, uh, we talked about intimacy. Mm. Uh, the, the Lord is my shepherd. And in verse 2, we talked about uh, the calmness. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Mm -hmm. And verse 3, we, we talked about focus. Mm -hmm. That he will direct me on the right paths. He will see me through. Mm -hmm. um, what I'd like to do, and if you've got a pen and pad, uh, if you don't, then maybe you can remember this. I've found that there's seven deadly D's, okay, that we have to face or will face. Not all of them, maybe some of them. But in our life, these times of, of, of storm clouds, these times of tumult, these times of, of severe difficulty. Mm -hmm. And um, 
One is debts. They're all D's, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, that we have to deal we're dealing with financial uh, upheaval right now it's it's chaotic we're uncertain we're grateful for the the possibility of the uh, the rescue monies coming from the government but still here in the USA here in the USA but it's difficult because everything is has uh, gone sideways financially mm. uh, two is disease and uh, disability mm. and on on that you have something long term you have something that is pernicious, it destroys, it causes one to, to, to lose hope. Uh, mm. Three is dis depression. Mm. And that could be situational or, or clinical depression. But, but in the midst of it all, there, uh, there's a feeling of, of, of what's the use. You're in a spiral downward. You're going further and further down. And there's, there's no hope. God, where are you? Why me? Why me? Why me? Mm. And then the fourth one is divorce. Uh, the loss of, uh, of a marriage and relationship. Uh, fifth is disillusionment, mm -hmm. uh, that you, you've disillusioned with life, you've disillusioned with your, your employer, you've disillusioned with your family, you feel incredible sense of cynicism and, and feelings of mistrust. You, you don't want to get hurt anymore. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, six is, um, I, I have here devastation. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by devastation is the catastrophes in life. We've hit a devastation. Mm -hmm. uh, the coronavirus in this country and in the world, it is a devastating tsunami of disease. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not, we don't have a vaccine for it yet. Mm -hmm. And we're doing the best we can with what we have, with social distancing, and we're trying to provide to wash our hands and to not touch our face and, and all the various uh, aspects of, of, of preventative measures. But in the midst of it all, uh, mm -hmm. there, there's this sense of, uncertainty, this, de this devastating tsunami. And then lastly is death. Mm. Uh, death is where we have the uh, feelings of, uh, uh, of total, uh, as one woman said to me, she feels numb with the loss of her husband. Mm. She feels incredibly, there's ache that won't go away and there's tears that won't stop. So well, we plus, have all these. Plus the fear of death, the fear itself. Yeah. That, that, and, you know, Don and I have said to each other, well, everyone's going to die. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of time. My son, John Mark, likes to say that we all have an expiration point. And so whether it's now or a year from now or 10 years or 20 years from now, we all are going to die. And the, de the fear of death is the number one fear that everyone faces. And right now, that fear is haunting. It's in everyone's face. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a difficult time, to say the least. There's another D. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, the, the Psalm 23, over 200 times mm. uh, in the Bible, uh, the word shepherd, or sheep rather, is used for believers. It's used mm. for those who are followers mm. of God. Over 200 times. Mm. Before we deal with the sheep, I'd like you to understand a little bit more when it says the Lord. Okay, that word Lord, David was writing, inspired by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that word Lord was Jehovah, mm -hmm. was the great covenant word, name for God. Mm -hmm. It was, it was uh, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, mm -hmm. where they couldn't even put the vowels in between. They couldn't even pronounce mm -hmm. the word. It was that holy. But what this meant was, I am that I am, mm -hmm. that the great I am, self-sufficient, okay, self-satisfying, existing above all others is God. He, he is, he is, that's why when Moses went to the burning bush and he said, who do I say sent me? He says, tell them I am has sent you. This is why Jesus throughout his ministry said, I am the bread of life. I am the rivers of living, living water. I am the light of the world. He's talking about the great I am. And so here it is, the transcendent God, the eternal otherness, is used right there at the beginning. The Lord, I am, mm. is my shepherd. Mm. And what you have there is transcendence with eminence. Mm. You have the great I am mm. saying, now I will humble myself mm. and come. Mm. Yes, we know mm. as Jesus in, in, in the vulnerable, fragile, human form. Yes, the God man, but in there, that there in Psalm 23, what's being stated is the Lord 
Mm. is my shepherd. Mm. <laughs> he's as vulnerable, he's as fragile, he is open as he can be, perfect in all of his ways, but he comes to us in a very welcoming, accessible way. Mm. Mm. And why he chooses sheep, men and women, is that there was back then, uh, the sheep was the common uh, currency. If you had a lot of sheep, you had food and you had money. Mm. Because the food came from lamb chops, uh, mutton, lamb mm -hmm. stew, you see. Mm -hmm. And then, you, there's your food. Then you could shear the sheep, and that would be your currency to sell it. Mm -hmm. So these lambs... Or to make clothes. Yeah, to make clothes. That's right. Sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is lamb's wool. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point of the matter is, is that... So when it was a valuable commodity, even though they were... Oh, how can we say it? They were dense. Mm. They were... Uh, oh, uh, Very it, fearful. It, Sheep are the most fearful of all um, yeah. creatures. Um, I thought about that this morning when I um, was start setting up to, to meet with all of you. And our, we have three golden retriever mixes. Uh, Peaches, she's a full golden. Rudy, who's part golden uh, cocker spaniel. And then Sweden. And Sweden was on the sofa here in our den. And I was moving things around and she jumped up, terrified. And I looked over at her and I put my hand on her and I said, don't be afraid, sweetheart. And when I did that, at that very moment, I realized that here she was, she even looks like a little lamb. Mm -hmm. She does. And I thought over and over and over again in scripture, we hear what words do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. it, we, we hear it echoed in the Torah and we hear it echoed by Jesus. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid because sheep, us humans, are we are very prone to fear. Fear is the great enemy and the, the, the enemy of the power of the prince of the air, Satan himself, uses fear to terrify us. And, um, and that's why um, we need a shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, by utilizing that visual of a sheep, mm. what you have there is that uh, sheep were um, intellectually challenged, okay? They were dense. They, they were slow of thought. Mm. Uh, they, were, they were defenseless. And mm. what I mean by that is that if you left them in our backyard and, and they stayed there, they wouldn't leave the backyard. They would just simply eat the grass and eat the grass until there was no more grass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they would just bleat. They would cry until you moved them from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the problem is that the, and let's just say here, a raccoon comes down the hill and the sheep are there. The sheep do not, we have, even though they're golden retrievers, they can bark. Okay, they can growl. Well, you have you ever heard a sheep growl? Mm. Go, grrr, you know, they don't growl. <laughs> Let's not, see that again. <laughs> that was a sheep growl. I think so. Okay, but the point is, is that they they are they're helpless. They mm. they can't take. Uh, they can't even cry out. They don't know how to growl. <laughs> they don't know how to growl. They don't know how to bark. <laughs> they just simply are going along a path and. And the problem with the sheep is, is that if the water is running, it says, mm -hmm. he leads me beside streams of, of quiet waters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the water's running and bubbling and, and, and vibrant, if it's alert, if it was moving too quickly, mm -hmm. they won't drink of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It intimidates them. Mm -hmm. If it's noisy, <laughs> they won't take of it. Mm -hmm. It has to be quiet and calm mm -hmm. and soothing streams of water. Mm -hmm. And, and the problem for uh, the shepherd is he's having to be so vigilant because of these fearful and, and really helpless, helpless and, and, and short-sighted animals. They get themselves into trouble. They, they smell. You think your dog smells bad. Hey, you got to have a sheep for a pet. Then you'll see. Uh, they're dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, they get parasites. They mm -hmm. get thorns. They get... Weeds, they get the, anything in their the, fur. And, and bugs uh, uh, swarm around their heads 
and they sometimes are known to shake their heads so fiercely yeah. that they literally shake themselves to death. So the shepherd has to anoint them with oil to protect them. But we'll be talking more about that yeah, next week. Yes. But but the sheep is, is one that that is on this path, and the shepherd has to constantly he names them. Okay. Mm. He has a personal relationship with mm. them, and he knows each one of them, and he knows exactly what what is necessary. The, the problem is, is that uh, the sheep are prone to wander. The sheep are prone to get distracted. The sheep are prone to, to lose their way. And to look for greener grass. Look for greener grass, mm -hmm. yeah. But usually they'll just stay with that one grass they have. Yes. But, yeah. but, but the point of the matter is, is that for us with our soul, we're prone to wander. We're prone to go astray. We're prone to miss the mark. Mm -hmm. We're prone to not hear the voice of the shepherd. Mm -hmm. We're prone to, to say, okay, I'll go over here. This looks pretty good. And as we go on our path physically of disobedience, we're, we're uh, uh, fracturing our soul. Mm -hmm. We're causing a disconnect. And we're getting, out, we're getting into harm's way by not having the protection of the shepherd. Right. And so here he offers transcendence and imminence. Here he offers a way to deal with the deadly deeds of cultivating calmness. And now we come to verse 4, which is beautiful. And if you have your uh, Bible, Jenny, you want to read verse 4? Do you have an NLT? Oh, okay, I'll do it. Yes. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, mm -hmm. okay? Or the Hebrew has it, the dark valley of death. Mm-hmm. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Okay, I said to you on verse 1, it was intimacy. On verse 2, it was calmness. Verse 3 was focus. This is what he gives us. Uh, verse 4 is passionate protection. Mm. And why I added the word passionate is because if you notice... Uh, even when I walk through the darkest valley, uh, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Mm -hmm. Talking about intimacy again, mm -hmm. connectedness, a, an incredible sense of oneness as, as we go on this path. Uh, the, the way it was for the uh, shepherd, he carried a rod and he carried a staff. Mm -hmm. And those were two instruments of his protection. And uh, why don't you go for it, Janie? So I love this picture of uh, the shepherd with the lamb and his rod. Um, the rod was used um, to s throw it, if necessary, towards the wolves that were coming near the sheep. Um, it was uh, the, uh, the rod of authority. Think of the rod as authority over evil. And that's what we have through Christ Jesus, authority over evil. He has the rod, and the rod is his rod of truth. And when he sees evil coming, he hurls it to protect us, his lambs. Mm -hmm. and, and why there was the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. the shepherd, the seasons, they would be down in the valley and the grass was lush. Mm -hmm. But then as the season changed, the, the better grass was up on the mountainside. Mm -hmm. The problem on these narrow ways, the wolves or the mountain lions, who, who, whatever the animals were, that were waiting for the sheep. Mm -hmm. and, and to, uh, yes, kill, steal, kill, and destroy uh, the sheep. Mm -hmm. if, if the shepherd was lax, was lackadaisical and careless, he wouldn't notice that the, some sheep were missing. Mm -hmm. But the, with the rod, mm -hmm. he was careful. It truly was a, a remarkable thing. This one doesn't show as much of the, the, the way at the top. That's there, there was like a, a... Well, the staff. He also has a staff. Right, okay. And the staff, I don't have a picture of that, but everyone knows what a staff looks like. It's like little, little Bo, Bo, Bo Peep. Little Bo Peep, yes. Yeah, she had one. <laughs> okay, that works. Um, and the staff was for two purposes. Actually, more than that, but we'll just go with two right now. Um, if one of the sheep should start slipping off the side of the cliff, the shepherd would take the staff, it has a hook, of course, and he would use the staff to scoop up 
the sheep and bring it, put it back on the path. That was one very important utilitarian use of the staff. But there was another use of the staff each morning. Hmm. Each morning before the sheep were called out or as they were being called out of the pen because the shepherd always kept them pinned in at night with rock. He would get rock and build uh, um, a, a temporary pen, if you will, if they were out in the middle of who knows where. And before they, they came out of the pen, one by one, they would rub up against the shepherd and his staff and he would call them by name. And that staff was comfort. It was the comfort of his presence, which is exactly what we receive when we too come close to the shepherd in the best time of the day when the birds are singing and the world is still still so that we can hear the shepherd call our name. There you are hmm. with the rod and the staff. And really, if you look at that uh, verse 4 of Psalm 23, notice, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. He has three weapons. There's the staff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Mm -hmm. In other words, the darkest valley, okay? The darkest valley that we talked about just a moment ago. You know, Don, if I could read sure. um, also from the Hebrew Bible, um, which is this one. It's very interesting. You know, different translations, they're not that one is right and the other one's wrong. Different translations emphasize different things. Um, the Hebrew doesn't change and the Greek doesn't change. But it's interesting what the Hebrew Bible says about Psalm 23 and verse 4. Even if. I pass through death, dark ravines. Mm -hmm. hmm. Beautiful. I like that too. I will fear no disaster for you are with me. Your rod and your staff reassure me. Do you need reassurance this morning? Do you need to know that you are companioned with the Lord God Almighty? The shepherd is calling your name. Can you still your soul to hear him? He knows you. He sees you. He will reassure you of his nearness. That is what we receive when we open our ears to hear and our mind to understand. And I'm going to ask right now that the Holy Spirit will come to each and every one of you listening right now and those who will listen in the days ahead. Holy Father, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would comfort your people right now. They're so afraid. Fear stalks the land and you need to reassure them that you are close, that you know them by name, Lord God, have mercy on your people, on all who call upon you, who call upon you in truth. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Holy Spirit, and comfort your people this day. Bring them close, bring them close, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Yes. Amen. So, it takes all three. The Lord is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The fact that he has the presence of the shepherd there, but the shepherd is wise to fight off predators yes. with, the, with the rod, the club, and then to protect and restore the wandering sheep with, mm. the, with the staff. Mm. And mm. The, because of that, mm. God will protect you from evil, as Janie prayed. God will lift you up to a new place of living. Mm. All I know is, is that in the midst of this, as you're facing maybe the darkest valley you ever thought, mm. the darkest valley you ever, ever thought in your life. Maybe all the D's have fallen on top of you. Right. All the D's have fallen on top of you. And in the midst of this, all you need to do is take Psalm 23, mm. slowly, mm. 
the Lord is my shepherd, mm. I will not lack anything. Mm. Either, see, it doesn't really matter what Janie says or, or I say. It, it, what matters is what God says through us. And if God is speaking to you right now mm. and mm. telling you, we're just the pencils. <laughs> he wants to write the love letter to you. Yes. And he wants you to understand that no matter how deep and dark the hell hole, the valley you're going through, mm -hmm. God's love is deeper still. Mm. He knows what you're going through. He understands it, and he sees you. And just like with a sheep, he has compassion. He has empathy. He has care. He has strength. He has, most of all, mm. the rod and the staff mm. to protect you. Mm. Mm. I, I ran across. Go ahead. So, um, not to interrupt, but we'll come we'll do this dance. Yeah. Um, something came to me very strong when Don was speaking that I really feel needs to be said. And that is that there are two aspects to being close to the shepherd. We need to, um, we need to receive his love and we need to obey his word. It's trust and obedience. Um, I remember so clearly when I had gone through a very dark ravine of my own. We've been through some dark ravines, haven't we, dear? That's why the gray hair. <laughs> and the white hair. Yeah, really. <laughs> And um, uh, it, was, it was as clear as a bell early one morning, the Spirit of God, the very comfort of God, said to me, follow the Lamb and obey His commands. You see, the interesting thing about our Lord Jesus Christ is that He took on flesh and became a lamb Himself. <laughs> you say, but wait, wait, I thought He was a shepherd and we were the sheep. That's right. But when He took on flesh, he became the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we'll be talking more and more about that. We're heading into Easter. It's an amazing time to be alive in Christ. And so he said to me, follow the Lamb and obey his commands. And you know, I said to him, you bet I will. I will listen so closely. I will obey what you tell me to do. I will listen. I will not trust my own instincts, although we have some we have some of those that are in line with God, but not all of them. We are mixed, right? Mm -hmm. We are mixed. We're flawed. We're flawed. We're broken and we need to be really learned to be still and to hear the voice of the good shepherd and you will know his voice. It is different from your own. It is simple. Mm -hmm. It is loving. It is clear, and it's not what you would think. He brings peace. He speaks peace. He speaks comfort. He doesn't speak fear. He doesn't speak um, anxiety. He speaks peace, and he gives clear guidance. You know, there's something we forgot to say about the rod and the staff. There was another purpose of the rod and the staff, and it was, it was also used for disciplinary purposes. The shepherd sometimes, you know, if the carrot doesn't work, he has to use the stick. And sometimes the shepherd has to get the rear end of those sheep in line with and back in to the flock. It is, it, we're, we are, as Don said so well, we're rebellious at heart, there's part of us, not all of us, but there's part of us, all the, part of all of us, I should say, yeah. that <clears throat> tend to wander, as Don said. And we need not only the, the comfort of the rod, of, uh, uh, of the staff, but we need, we need the, the rod to also discipline us. It gets our attention. Absolutely, get our attention. So that and we, if we receive it with the goodness and wisdom and and sovereignty of God, then we move on. It's good. But if we complain and why, 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 and, and murmur, yeah, and com and 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 and, refuse, and moan and groan, moan and groan, moan and groan, then we will miss out on the life and the wholeness that we have through Christ. And I'm telling you, ever since He said those words to me, it's been years. I have not. Oh, I. It's not that I've not been um, um, rebellious at times and. And all of those, all that broken stuff. But, but in the larger part of my soul, I have said yes. And Don has said yes to the Good Shepherd. We will follow you because you know the way. 
You are the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ran across a documentary on Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He died at 39 years of age. He was a Lutheran pastor and uh, there in, in Germany. And evangelical, uh, committed to following Christ each and every day of his life. Uh, he gave Hitler uh, some time to see if this was just simply, simply an aberration of his behavior, his personality, and then he realized this, this man was uh, uh, corrupting the whole country and evil for the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bonhoeffer went to others that had the same concern about Hitler's regime, his leadership, and as the scripture talks about, uh, to, to stand against evil, mm -hmm. you know. And so with much prayer and reflection, uh, uh, Bonhoeffer uh, stood against evil. Uh, the uh, attempt uh, with Hitler was to overthrow was unsuccessful. And so the six of them were all thrown in prison to be executed. Mm -hmm. While in prison, uh, Bonhoeffer talked about his faith and talked about the closeness of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he talked about these components of of uh, courage and conviction and human dignity and uh, the, the, what it takes to, to live against evil. Sadly, one of those arrested was his brother, Klaus, mm. and the way they moved him to Flossenburg concentration camp in 1945, well, 44, they uh, had Christmas, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. They would execute some of the prisoners. And then on Easter, Good mm. Friday and Easter, they... Mm they uh, executed the other uh, prisoners. And the way they had it, they were to be, uh, they were facing hanging and they faced complete uh, nakedness, uh, bare feet, the whole bit, nothing, no glasses, nothing. And in that cold, because of the snow was still out in Germany at uh, Flossenburg, uh, Dietrich saw his brother uh, hang first and he said these words to him, he said, be brave, my brother, for mm. the living God. Mm. Be brave, my brother, for the living God. Mm. Mm. And why I bring up this about Bonhoeffer, and he faced his execution courageously and bravely and committing his hands to the living God, committing his heart, his life to the living God, is we're talking about the soul. Mm. Our body may decay. Our body may die. Our it body, will. It will. <laughs> it will. And it will decay. Yes. But, but the point is, that as we are internally mm. doing what we can to cultivate calm and feed our soul, mm. and no matter when darkness comes, we will be able to prevail and, and, and get beyond it, get, oh, get above it because of the presence of Christ. Mm. The second person is Denzel Washington. Mm. I happened to listen to a 10-minute talk about him. And he gave a little public address uh, for the, us as a country. Stay safe, stay strong, and be patient. Mm. God will prevail. We're in this together. Mm. That was from Denzel Washington. Mm. Stay safe, stay strong, be patient. God will prevail. We're in this together. Washington is very committed uh, in his faith. And he said, uh, when you fall down seven times, get up eight. Mm. And he said, I didn't always stick with God, but he's always stuck with me. Mm. And that has overwhelmed me mm. with the grace and mercy of the Lord. It has mm. humbled me, says Washington. And this is what he says. Remember those of you of faith. He says, my life, I have been protected. I have been directed. I have been corrected. <laughs> and I have been perfected. That is what Jesus has done for me. Say that again. I have been protected. I have been directed. I have been corrected. And I have been perfected in Jesus, my Lord. That's beautiful. And the third one was, uh, I think that we used as an email, uh, Frederick Beekner. Mm. You don't have to know where you're going, mm. but you have to know who is holding the light. Mm. Mm. We're all going through this with confusion and at times uh, uh, discouragement, mm. but we've got to remember who's holding the light. Amen. And here he is. So this picture hangs in our home. Um, we love it. Um, we've had it many, many years. Yeah. And it is um, a masterful uh, rendition of our Good Shepherd, who not only laid down his life for us, but he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and he intercedes for us. He is interceding for us 
right now. He is interceding for this planet right now. Whether you're in Switzerland or Sweden or Australia or um, Iran or Iraq or Israel, wherever you are, the USA, the, the Spirit of God is hovering and the Lord Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father is interceding. And you say, well, he could have prevented this. Well, that's right. But he didn't, did he? Because God corrects. And perhaps this is a correction for all of us to get our souls in line with the Good Shepherd so that he might be glorified, bringing honor to his name. We love that part of yeah. Psalm 23. It's all about honor to his name. Well, Charles Spurgeon said that when afflictions come upon us in suffering, it's God's love letters in black envelopes. There you go. No one likes to receive a black envelope. Mm. We all like them white or pastel or mm. striped. But when a black envelope comes, it's mm. very, very hard mm. and uh, overwhelming. But mm. in the midst of it, if we can be patient and humble and prayerful and, and as you said a moment ago, listen. Listen. To be still and listen. listen. Amen. There's a love letter. Yes, and um, calmness, uh, cultivating a quiet spirit is an art that everyone can learn. I've told you this before, and I'll close with this, and then we'll end with uh, the Lord's Prayer. Right. Cultivate a quiet mind. This is what the Lord said to me many years ago. Cultivate a quiet mind. Find the peace that swallows fine. Widen the range of your heart's desire. Acquire a taste for holy things. Remain. Remain. Well, before the Lord's Prayer, let's just pray. Okay. You first and then okay. we'll move. Okay. Palms up? Yeah, palms, palms up. Palms up, listen. everyone. That's what we do yeah. around here. And especially this is popular in the Philippines. <laughs> I was there in 2009. We have a lot of Filipino friends yeah. listening. Pastor Don was there in 2009. Yeah. He, he's half Palms up, surrendered. I'm yes. a mestizos. He's Yes, yes. Holy Father, we thank you that you have been with us. We honor you. We worship you. We adore you as you adore us. We can't even wrap our heads around that, Holy Father, that in the midst of our brokenness and our waywardness, that you still love us. And you proved your love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Holy Father, I know that there are some listening right now who have never received the free gift of eternal life through Christ. And they, they, they want to. They want this wonder, this awe, this incredible love, this companionship, this, this uh, safety of the soul. But they're not sure how to get there, Father. And so by the power of your spirit, as you hear them, uh, just say these simple words, my friends. If you need to know the Good Shepherd, just repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, I need you. I need a Good Shepherd. Please come now to me. I need to hear you call my name. I need to know that you see me. I need to know that you pray for me. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my rebellion from you, my creator. Fill me, cleanse me, make me new by the power of your spirit. As I said earlier, that it's not my words or Janie's words that matter. It's the words that come from you, Father, through mm -hmm. us. And so we pray in some way, shape, or form, mysterious as it is, that there, there would be a connection. There would be, uh, we could be your, uh, um, yes, flawed conduits, mm -hmm. but, but still your conduits. And if anything can happen today, Lord, I, I pray maybe just maybe those four verses from psalm 23 mm. that those who are listening could could take time and let it sink in the lord is my shepherd 
the God of transcendence, the God of imminence, is saying he's my shepherd. Mm. I will not lack anything. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. He leads me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, for his for the on, for the sake of his honor. For the sake of his honor. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. For Lord, you are with me. For you are close beside me. And your rod and your staff, they your, protect me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort. Thank you, Father, that as we take these four verses, this is an opportunity for people to have it go from the head to the heart. Mm. Let it sink in. And I pray, merciful God, shepherd of all shepherds, mm. you would soothe and comfort and, and tenderly come beside mm. that man or woman that's mm. in much angst. Mm. Would you come beside that man or woman that is so troubled and so stressed and so conflicted and so anxious and so worried and so scared, they would just come to the cross mm -hmm. and see Jesus, mm -hmm. the one who will make them whole. By his wounds you have been made whole. Mm -hmm. We pray for that, Lord. We pray that just for today, you will come beside that broken individual. We're all broken. Mm -hmm. but that particularly broken individual and let them know you can be making them whole. Yes. Come Holy Spirit, come gently to your people who need you so. Come Holy Spirit. We ask that you would lay your hand of healing on those who are struggling with the coronavirus or other diseases. We ask for your healing. Lord, would you just lay your hand of healing on all those who need your healing touch and pour your light and your love throughout every cell of their body, enlivening them, making their cells, their white blood cells rise up and bring healing, fight the fight. In the name of Jesus Christ, fight the fight mm -hmm. of healing. We pray, Lord, for your mercy, that for your anointing. And we pray for those who are anxious of mind, that which you would flow into their minds and encircle those anxious places and those dark valleys in their brain and bring them peace, for you are the Prince of Peace. And we agree with Denzel Washington. I have been protected. Mm. I have been corrected. Mm. I have been directed. And by the grace of God, I have been perfected. Mm. In the name of the Father, Son, Sorry, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, friends, for being with us today. Um, it would be a wonderful thing if you would share this video this live broadcast on your Facebook page. There may be someone on your in your friend list who is really needing to hear what we said today. Would you like and share this? And also, please know that if you'd like to receive emails where we will reiterate um, the, the key points of this message, just come to janieseltzer.com and subscribe to my blog and you will get an email. Don't forget that we will pray for you as well as if you will send us your needs and if you'll speak them, we will pray. We care about you and um, as we, many of you care about us and we are a family of faith um, together under the Lordship of Jesus. Thank you for being with us and we look forward to seeing you again. Until then, stay safe. Stay strong. Stay strong. And then you were going to say shalom. 
and shalom. And I'm going to say Godspeed. And Godspeed. Goodbye.